All right, so having seen how we can make some basic filters like grayscale, conversion, and thresholding, um, let's build some more fun ones. And one that I really love and we've been seeing a lot of in recent years is Duotone. Here's, um, you know, there's a whole bunch here if you just do a quick search. Um, and basically this is um, converting pixels based on brightness between two ranges of color. Um, so I've got my uh, project set up here again, um, but because Duotone's a little more complicated, I think I'm going to make this into a function that we can send our image into and we get back the result and then we can display it on screen. Um, so I've, I've loaded my image here and I know what I would that what I want to do is be able to say image equals Duotone, um, send in my image and then send in two colors that are going to be the, the colors that I use. Um, so let's just go ahead and we can kind of get this set up. And I've picked some cool colors that I kind of like. Like that. So I know that this is how I want my function to run. And I'm doing this, I'm, I'm going to run this in setup because I only want to transform it once. And then I can display the result down here in a draw like this. So I'm going to make my function called duotone and it's going to take in um, an input image and two colors that I want to work with. Oops, great. So as you might imagine, um, we have some basic steps to do here. We're going to say input.loadpixels. Um, now, I mean, it's worth kind of saying like, because this gets a little, there's more steps here. Um, I'm sending in the image, but I'm calling it input over here. Um, that's in part for us to keep track that this is not our global uh, variable image, but it's just whatever I'm sending in. So you can imagine this function as a little black box. You send in an image, it does some stuff, and then it spits out an image when it's finished. Um, so I load the pixels. I want to go through all the pixels. Input dot uh, height. Same thing for X. And then I know I want to do input.updatePixels when we're done. And then it's going to return the image input when we're finished. So now if I run this, we shouldn't see any errors. We just get the same image back because we haven't changed anything. Um, then um, this Duotone works very similar to thresholding. We want to get the brightness of each pixel. And again, I'm going to use the red value. So I'm going to say input.get x and y uh, at index zero. You could apply the better method here too. And then um, we're going to use lerp color for this. Um, and maybe you've seen the lerp color command before. It allows us to seamlessly transition between one color and the other, and it does all the math for us. Um, but lerp color asks for the value to be in a range, a certain, so it picks the color based on a number between zero and one. Um, so I'm going to just divide brightness by 255, and that's going to make sure it's in zero to one. You could use map here as well. And then my new color will be created with lerp color, and it'll be between C1 and C2 using the brightness as the position between those two colors. And then we just say input.set x and y new color. And that's it. So now let's make this a little bigger. We can run this. And you can see it takes it a sec to process this. Um, but the result is pretty cool. So we've got this kind of like um, uh, purple to yellow with some weird colors in between. Um, and we've defined our colors up here. We could even make these variables if we want so that you could change them easily like this. And now, you know, I could try swapping these around and see the results. So maybe we do orange and blue, like this. Oops, what an, oh, ah, so this is interesting. You may have run into this before. You're trying to create a color up here as a global variable or something else, and it's giving you this error, and it's saying color is not defined. And you're thinking, what? That doesn't make sense. Like color, color is defined as part of P5.js. The answer to why this happens is a little complicated, but basically, 
P5.js doesn't exist to the world until setup gets run. Before that, it just does not exist. So color is not a JavaScript thing. It's a P5.js thing. Um, and this is very frustrating. There's some ways around it, but the easiest way is just to create these as variables up here and then change them in setup. So I can say C1 equals C2 equals. And now we get, oh, that's kind of freaky. Um, so you'll have to experiment with colors and see how they sort of work or change your image. Um, you know, it would be fun to just play with this and see, I found complementary colors are really nice. That's really cool. I don't know how well that comes through on the video, um, but duotones are really fun thing. Um, and it's really just the thresholding, but you, instead of the uh, binary decision between two colors. It uses lerp color to give you a kind of this seamless transition.